Fine, you don't want to balance. I don't care anymore. Oh my gosh, look at this. Most of this episode is just gonna be watching the beach ball spin. Holy shit! Oh, almost fell off my chair. Right, so here's the situation. I want you to see this. So I guess I just know enough people where they will just give me computers. <laughs> so I just met a friend. Yeah, Crazy Ken has friends in a parking lot and they just, they just were giving away this iMac G4. Hey guys, how you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too, because as you saw earlier, someone just gave me this iMac G4 out of the blue, which was super generous. Pardon the whispers, the guards are asleep right now, so I thought I would take this time to do a personal project. Let's listen. Yeah, I think they're down. Okay, we're good, we're good guys. Okay, so I have no idea what's on this iMac G4. I never booted it up. We're gonna explore it together, and there's a bunch of software and manuals and accessories that the owner gave me with this computer. I haven't looked at any of it yet. I wanted to save it for, well, our bonding time. So. Let's have a look at what we have. Item number one from the haul is obviously the iMac itself. And judging by the Garamond typeface, this is an older iMac G4, probably from 2001. We'll take a look at the specs in a bit. Peripheral wise, we have been blessed with a beautiful Apple mouse, which used to be called a mm mouse, but I can't say it because trademark disputes. So that's lovely. The world just runs on greedy money. This part I was excited about. This iMac came with pro speakers. That was actually one of the main reasons I took this off the original owner's hands because they were giving me pr just free pro speakers with the iMac, so that's pretty cool. I have the USB version of these that I use with my G4 Cube, but I have not had the actual pro speakers. Until today. We also have, this is probably the most disgusting part, <laughs> this, this keyboard. Look at how f***ing yellow it is. Like, what environment was this thing in? Spacebar, totally destroyed. It's, it's yellow. And it, what I think is interesting is, there's like a sticker here that says, hold the eject key to open disk drive. Was that like an official sticker that came on the packaging and they just never took it off? I don't know, but that is just, that's just gross. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> like, look at, the back is like beautiful and white and, yeah, we're gonna probably not use that. Oh, oh gosh, it feels like ick. All right, moving right along. They also gave me this just bag of accoutrements. So let's go through it. Looks like we have some kind of modem cable. I can't say I've seen one of these with this computer before. But yeah, it looks like uh, something for the modem port. We have an Apple jewel case sort of thing the old Chrome logo, and again, more Garamond. iMac Media. This one says copyright 2002, so that might be when this computer, this particular computer came out. So we have the Apple hardware test. Software restore disk one through five. That's that. Well, good, just in case we need to nuke this hard drive. <laughs> bon Appetit. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put you right there, because you look pretty. Yeah, like, you don't wanna, fine, you don't wanna balance, I don't care anymore. Okay, this is interesting. An Apple DVD-R 4.7 gigabyte media, certified for use with Apple DVD-R drives. This was probably back when DVDs were probably like $5 a piece and Apple was pushing the digital lifestyle, so they probably sold blank DVDs you could use to burn with your iLife applications. I've not seen one of these in person before. That's very different. There's nothing written on it, so let's actually, let's look at the back. It doesn't look like there's anything burned on this Whoa, disc, so yeah, that might be a blank disc. I do like that design though. That's pretty cool, I've never seen that before. All right, well, we'll save that. Oh, there's more. The haul is huge. Mac OS 10 install disc, let's see, this is version 10.2, this is Jaguar. I have not used Jaguar in forever. I don't even think I have a disc of Jaguar until, well, now. Mac OS 10 install disc two, so. If we ever need to do a reinstallation sensation, 
we have our lovely software restore discs. Now this is, yeah, this is the Apple Care protection plan. And this is when you used to get Tech Tool Deluxe with it. I don't think they do that anymore, but I remember that back in the day. What else do they got? They have a verbatim CD. This was probably something that the owner burned data to at one time. I'm looking at the back of this disc. It does not look like anything is actually burned on there. So good, we got a free CD. The whole thing is worth it. The iMac user guide. Oh, with colored pictures. Apple always does like to go all out. Oh yes, the old Aqua user interface. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun exploring that. So yeah, I'm guessing Jaguar is on here. Pretty sweet. We'll just, uh, you'll sit there. Greeting card factory for Macintosh. That dog is pretty cute. Yeah, I don't know what this is at all. User guide. I don't know if I don't know if this was like a piece of software Apple included back in the day, or if this was something the owner just happened to have. But okay, there's more. Oh, there's more. Here's the Apple Care service and support literature, I suppose. Wow, they they kept everything. This is awesome. Oh, there's some handwriting on the back. This must maybe was serviced at one time. Wait, what floppy drive? For more information on your smart disk USB floppy drive, consult the user guide on the included CD. What? <laughs> That's not something Apple sold, right? They didn't, or maybe they did actually like sell the SanDisk ones. I don't know. Casey needed a floppy drive. Yeah, Apple Care. All right. Software license agreement for Mac OS X, single use license. You want to read this? Let's 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 have a read. Um, this looks like it was just printed and stapled together. Oh. This, I, 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 Oh, there's handwriting on here. Yeah, um, they must have printed out some like manuals from online. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this. Yeah, this was printed right from Apple's website. You can tell how dated that is because of the Garamond serif typeface and the old Aqua tabs on the website. Dot Mac doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, they just printed this right from the website. That's cool. This is like a little like time capsule. This is pretty cool. Okay, well, I mean, if the literature and the printed stuff is this cool, just wait until we boot up the computer. I wonder what's on this hard disk. Click and design 3D. Oh, create and print amazing CD labels on your desktop. Okay, yeah. Oh my gosh, look at that. iPhoto 1.0, frequently asked questions. This must be, yeah, like this says modified August 2002. I was thinking, yeah, 2002. I cannot wait to do an exploration sensation of this hard disk. So, now that we got that out of the way, what do you say we connect these pro speakers, which Brent has showed me, they sound pretty badass, um, but I've never actually had them for myself. Let's connect those, hook up a mouse, not that disgusting keyboard, and boot this sucker up. Let's do it. So a big difference compared to the USB speakers is that the pro speakers use this special two and a half millimeter, yes, not three and a half millimeter, two and a half millimeter jack. This provides power and sound. And you also don't have a giant amplifier dangling on the wires. With the USB speakers, you had an amplifier on there. With this, not necessary. Let's just put those babies right there. Had a little trouble getting it in. Don't make that dirty. Come on, this is a somewhat family-friendly show. We have our mm mouse, and that about does it. I don't think we'll need to hook this thing up. I don't even know if I could use it with anything. Now, don't know if there's an airport card in here, but we're gonna take a look at the specs in a bit once we boot it up. We'll take a look at the system profiler. Let's go. I'm super stoked to boot up a Mac that has a startup chime because Apple's killing that off. Let's hear what it sounds like through these pro speakers. Power button's way over here. Three, two, one. Oh, almost fell off my chair. Wow, that was loud. Oh, I love it. Whew. Ooh, that was bassy. All right, so with the fans are running, hard drives running, not too noisy, relatively quiet. We are currently like day five in the booting process. This doesn't surprise me. Like every iMac G4 I've booted up with Jaguar just takes forever. I remember back when I was not in this asylum lair. <laughs> there was this computer lab at school that had a whole bunch of iMac G4s, and I think they were running Jaguar. They took, they, did, they just took forever to turn on. Okay, so what do we do while we wait for it to load? 
for real now, like all jokes aside, we're like three minutes into this boot up. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the hard drive is just full of garbage. Like maybe we'll have to clean this baby up. Maybe there's a lot of treasures on it. Like we're gonna be doing some treasure hunting, some like hard drive treasure hunting or an exploration sensation as I like to call it. I'm growing gray hairs. I have gray hairs now, it's official. This is, uh, this is insane. Well, you know, maybe this would be a good time to read the single use license agreement. I mean, what else are we gonna do, right? <clears throat> English, Apple computer incinerated. Software license agreement for Mac OS X. Single use license. Please read the software license agreement, parentheses, quote, license, quote, parentheses, carefully before using the software. Da -da -da. We'll skip some of that stuff. Number one, general. The software, including boot ROM code. Documentation, any fonts association collectively. Oh, then it's in different languages. It's actually not that long. It's a multilingual, multilingual document, which I suppose we could have deciphered from the fact that. It's multilingual on the cover page. Well, that was fun. And look at that, now it's booted. Oh man, oh, that startup screen, the pinstripes, that takes me back. Oh shit, these abstract wallpapers, you remember those? Yeah, perfect timing. It looks like it's loading the desktop now. 20 years later. <sighs> yeah, this hard drive must just be really full or it's got like a lot of cash on it and it's all gunked up, barnacles and crust, I don't know. But that is a ridiculous, this is ridiculous. Like it's a long boot time. We're not even at the desktop yet. We have the wallpaper or the desktop picture. We have the mouse cursor. Oh, here comes the dock. Here comes the dock, all dressed in socks. Oh, they have the slideshow mode on. Yep, menu bar is still loading there. Oh, we got the beach ball. We got beach ball. Okay, we're at the desktop, we made it. 10 to eight, that is indeed Jaguar. The old Roman numeral 10, the aqua buttons, the pinstripes, ooh, it's all coming back. We have the dock down here, the menu bar up here. Let's turn up the mouse tracking speed because it is just painfully low right now. I like a fast mouse. Oh, that animation. Yeah, this thing is definitely struggling to keep up here. Okay, well, it looks like we have Mac OS 9 on here too. Really? Well, that's interesting. Oh, that beach ball of death. I think we're gonna be seeing this guy a lot today. Yep. Hunker down, boys. All right, take a shot every time the beach ball shows up. Don't actually do that, you're gonna die. But that would be a fun game. That would actually be a really fun game. Oh my gosh, I, all I did was open the applications folder. Shit. Well, speaking of applications, while that's loading, down here we have the finder, looks like Acrobat, something else. Uh, let's see, what's this here? Oh, the labels in the dock aren't even loading. iClean, oh, okay. Well, either iClean really sucks or the person who owned this computer never used iClean because the computer is performing like shit. I have computers from the 80s that boot up faster, so let's just keep that in mind. This looks like the old iChat. We have iMovie, iTunes, Preview, iPhoto, something, something, Quicken, QuickTime, Stickies, Sherlock, System Preferences, something from Kodak, Kodak EasyShare, The Calculator, Netscape Navigator, this is really being slow. Yep, Netscape Navigator, HP Image Zone, and Text Edit. Let's see, this was Print Explosion, and this was Outlook Express. All right, wow, this, the performance, it's, it's too much. Save me. All right, so after like three minutes of beach balling, I busted into the applications folder, hooray. Yeah, we have a couple different things on here. Now, here's what's weird. There's 42 gigs free, so it's not like the hard drive is really stuffed. There must be something else wrong with this. I know there's Mac OS 9 on here, there's OS 10 on here. I also saw a previous systems folder, so there was at one time like a, a reinstall done. I don't know why there was a reinstall done, but there's probably a lot of stuff we could delete off of this computer too. But any hoozle, let's try going through applications. America Online, iDVD, we talked about that earlier. May have to experiment with that. Oh, my scroll bar, scroll bar is frickin' beach balling the finder. Are we serious right now? Is this what we're gonna be doing today? Good heavens, I can't scroll without the computer hanging on me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, what have I ever done to you? Stuff at standard, spring cleaning, Norton System Works. Yes, it certainly does. <laughs> iOmega, Netscape Navigator. Click and Design 3D, as we saw the 
book four. Okay, we're scrolling along. Oh, we got iMovie, iPhoto, some old iLife applications, that's cool. Pixel Enhance, very clever, I guess. Apple Works, ooh, the old productivity applications before iWork existed. Ah, that's fun. Just moving my cursor, we got a beach ball. Okay, how many shots do we have to take now? Like 27? This is really insane. If any like troubleshooting people worked on this computer, like they must be rolling in the dough. Like this would all be billable hours right here. Oh, your iMac? Yo, the one that hangs all the time? I will absolutely fix it for you. Remember, I get paid by the hour. If that thing takes an hour to boot up, boom, that's an hour of pay for me. Nothing really interesting in my stuff. We have the city of New Falls and Untitled 3. What kind of document is this? I'm just curious. I'm gonna snoop around a little bit. It is an NSRTF P board type. Okay, so NS is usually a prefix in like the developer environment. Um, RTF, rich text format. P board type, I have no clue. But man, like if this system is having performance issues right now, like that doc sometimes even lags, man, I don't want to boot up classic within OS 10. It's probably just gonna bring the whole thing down. Now, if I can boot into OS 9 separately, maybe that lighter weight operating system will work better. We can try that. So we have 768 megabytes of RAM and 800 megahertz power PC G4 processor, which that in and of itself should be fast enough to run this system. I just feel like something is really bogging this thing down. Maybe the finder has the answers. Nothing in the Kodak pictures. iPhoto library. iDVD. Doesn't look like there's much in there. Let's see, let's see if these are really big or not. 2.3 gigs, that's not too much. Eh, let's just open up iPhoto. Let's have some fun, see if an application performs well. Yeah, right. Oh shit, that actually loaded up way faster than I thought it would. <laughs> Loading library. Oh, the old barber pole animation. Oh, I missed that. Okay, of all the things I could find on this computer, there is a picture of CloudGate, which is a huge freaking coincidence because we were just looking at that on some past episodes with some photos that I shot. Stuff seems to be performing decent now. The finder was going really slow at first, but stuff seems to be loading okay. So I see that we have an ethernet, gigabit, not a gigabit ethernet, a, um, probably a hundred megabit ethernet connection that was once used on here. We have a menu bar item for it. We also have a modem menu bar item, which is currently idle. Yeah, I'm guessing there's no airport card in this thing. Yep. Yeah, there's no airport card in here. We can hook this up to Wi-Fi by like internet sharing it, but I don't think that's really necessary right now. What might have to also happen with this computer is we'll just have to do some reinstallations to maybe make it work better. We may just have to wipe the whole hard disk out and then reinstall everything with all of those CDs we have because we have a shit ton of CDs. So that may be in a future episode, but I wanna be careful with how much I wipe out because there's probably some programs on here that I don't have the CDs for. Plus if I wipe it out, that kind of ruins the whole time capsule-ness of it. Uh, oh, let's see if there's any music on here. <laughs> well, let's see, what did this owner listen to? Like, um, I was gonna make a joke about like a pop star, but like all this music is probably way older than like any of those like modern stars like careers are. I mean, it wouldn't work. This computer probably hasn't been used since like 2009, 2008. I don't know. This is it. This is all the music that's in here. Uh, I don't really want to play it, you know, copyright reasons, but let's just test the speakers, I guess. All right, it sounds like shit but that's because this is turned up way too high. Wow, these speakers sound freaking good. Uh, yeah, I believe Apple made them in collaboration with Harman Kardon. Holy balls, they sound great. These things are just pumping. You, you gotta see this shit. Well, the system seems to be performing better now. Dot Mac, oh yes, that is, that is a screensaver I hope everybody can have. Oh yeah, your life on the internet. All right. Yeah, let's just go to Apple background images and throw our default Jaguar on there. And there we go, aqua blue. I'm cool with that. Startup disk, let's see if OS 9 is an option. Oh yeah, OS 922. All right, I'm gonna set that as the default. Next time we reboot, we're gonna go into OS 9, see what's up. Let's poke around in some of the software a little bit. Let's see what version, uh, let's see, I think they had iDVD and iDVD2 on here. I don't think I've ever used the original iDVD. That goes way back. I remember that was a big deal because it was like, you can just burn your own movies, your own home movies onto a DVD on your own computer. Oh, I dig this old design. Oh, the nice pulsating aqua buttons. Again, another nice thing we don't get anymore. Sad. We're using the fact that, you know, we have a gigaflop sitting here. Uh, <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe we can do something with it. And so, very gently, we just 
dim and brighten the button to say, hey, this is the one that's going to get activated if you hit return. My great DVD. We'll throw that on the desktop, you know, once it loads. Oh, the iDisc. Remember that thing? <laughs> Mobile Me. Does anyone remember Mobile Me? We could actually use this as a DVD player. It has a DVD drive in it. <laughs> Holy f Holy shit! What the f Get What? Oh my gosh! Okay, the guards are gonna be awake now. Oh! <laughs> Holy shit! That was really fucking loud! <laughs> That's kind of coincidental, because I was just about to say, we could use this as a DVD player, because one, it has a DVD drive built in, two, it has a decently sized LCD screen, and three, the speakers are really loud, and that just proved my point right there. Oh my gosh, <laughs> is my heart still working? It is, okay, good. Oh yes, the old animated themes, yeah. Oh, we have a theme chooser, that was global, or this is global. Oh yeah, inactive windows had that transparent look. Pretty cool. Kind of like Windows Arrow, but before Windows Arrow. Wedding, family, sky. I I remember seeing some of these when I started using iDVD. Let's make a wedding. Oh yeah. This was cool stuff, man. You could just do this right on your computer. iDVD too. Nice. Actually, I think I have one of my own DVDs nearby. One that I tested on the Macintosh TV with the DVD player. I should throw that into here so we can test the speakers with my own content. And so we can also test the DVD playback capabilities of the computer. Most of this episode is just gonna be watching the beach ball spin. I found my, coincidentally also a verbatim disc, videos for Mac TV demo, which was also a, another beautiful episode. So let's bust open the DVD player. Oh yeah, the nice wireframe animation. Begin DVD insertion process. Oh, shit. I guess I can't use the eject button in the software. Yeah, without a keyboard hooked up, I also really can't use the terminal to open up the thing. So yeah, I guess I gotta hook up this disgusting keyboard to press the eject button. Oh, so gross. Located in the back for your convenience. Oh, this keyboard is so gross. All right, there's our disk drive and in you go. Okay, um, it sounds like a cow with a really long moo, or a very sick airplane. That disk drive does not sound like it should. I, I'm pretty sure they weren't that buzzy back then. Ooh, yeah, that's, that doesn't sound right. It, this DVD should work. It's a single layer DVD-R. Not permitted. Okay, well, I literally have no idea what the frick is going on. Let's quit the DVD player, and... Eject this thing. <laughs> All right, take two on that. Let's see if it even mounts on the desktop. Wow, that does not sound normal. Okay, now it's making some different noises and we have an icon and the DVD player open automatically. That took about five minutes. Hardware, oh. You're still gonna love what we have to share with That sounds pretty awesome. And that subject is vintage Apple products. You're going to see Okay, so just a little uh, preface. I just put together like a compilation of videos on here. So this, for example, is the Vintage Apple Vault Volume 1 trailer. But yeah, wow, these speakers sound good. And all the old popping sound, yeah. Yeah. It clips a little bit when I go like to the second highest notch, but right there, it's, it's about fine. Yeah. Wow, that sounds good. Preserved Apple products in an all new light. The timeless designs, the blunders, the successes, the failures. You're going to see details you've never seen. I love these speakers. Awesome. Okay, well, I guess it does work as a DVD player. It just takes forever to load. The question is, does it take forever to load because the hardware is failing or because something is really screwed up in the operating system? To be honest, I'm willing to bet it's the system. Something is wrong with the software and stuff just takes forever to load. So stuff takes forever to communicate with the hardware. Opening up the system profiler, I just wanted to check to make sure this drive was compatible with these DVDs. I mean, I was assuming it would be because there's iDVD on here. Uh, yeah, right here. CDRW DVD-R. Disc burning, fully supported. Yeah, and this freaking this like finder window with the applications, like, 
that just hangs a lot. So I do want to boot into OS 9. I'm going to do that still, but man, this one 3D thing just keeps grabbing my attention. Click and design. Okay, we're just going to freaking open it up. I have no idea what it is. I think I, I think I had a manual for it somewhere. I think I showed it. Yeah, okay, it was a printed one from the interwebs. Yeah. We have to open this thing up. That looks like a gold mine of, like, early 2000s consumer gr graphic design. <laughs> Here we go. You guys ready for this? Click and design 3D. I'm going to make my next hot album cover with this dope software. Oh, it's... Oh, coincidentally, that's right. I was making a joke about the CD thing, but yeah, it's actually for designing, I guess, CD labels. Oh, it is. Videotape labels, audio cassette labels. Son of a bitch. I was just joking about the album art thing, but I guess uh, I have to go through with it now. This is for CDs. I used to use a program by B Light Soft. I should actually check and see if they're still around, but it was called Disc Cover. That was pretty cool. I used that program a lot. I don't really make discs anymore, but yeah, Disc Cover was a pretty cool program. Quick start wizard. Da -da 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 -da. Over the top. Name, purpose, description, date information, shareware. All right. Yourcompany.com. Guessing you could change the text here. All right, well, this will be my Crazy Ken mixtape, so we'll call this, uh, wait a minute. Whoa, I just had an epiphany. I think, I think the previous owner of this thing can see into the future. They knew who was going to be owning this computer one day. Do you know what I'm getting at? Hang on a second. This hard drive is labeled KK. Crazy Ken, I didn't label it that way. You saw it. It came up that way when I turned on the computer for the first time. I think... Someone is watching, and it's not just the curse, or the guards, or the people running the experiment on me here in the asylum. No, I think someone else outside of all that is also watching me. That is not a coincidence. I can't believe in coincidences anymore. Crazy Ken, KK, wow, okay. That's one letter away from something really bad, so we'll be careful with that. But yeah, anyway, I was gonna call this like my Crazy Ken mixtape. It was gonna be like KK mixtape, and I just had an epiphany about the initials. That's how I got down that rabbit hole, in case you're wondering. Contents. Uh, we gotta make some songs on here. Let's see. Um, don't go bake in my heart. I couldn't if I fried. Yeah, that's enough of that. So you can make CD labels in here. Do they have clip art? No program is complete without clip art. Let's see what the tip of the day is. Oh my gosh, that icon. That freaking icon was like the Windows 95 did you know thing. Did they hijack this from Microsoft, or is that like a general use icon? Because that looks just like Windows 95. Let's click the 3D button. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, shit. We can zoom in and out of this. It looks like we have an extrusion on here with like a some kind of bevel. Oh, yeah. We're going to call this Crazy Ken. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this, this, is, this is nice. Geneva? No, we're cooler than that. Chicago, though. Bringing us back to the original Macintosh, right? Should we render this in low quality or high quality? I think we should go all out. Effects. Oh, you can arc it. Okay. Materials. Texture. Lights. Background. Light. So we can turn off some lights. Oh, yeah. Give it like a spotlight. Can I like move this around? Oh, check it out, man. Working in 3D. Look at that. We can transfer that. There we go. Kind of like the good old days of word art and Microsoft Office. You know, the stuff that you probably used way too much of. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I'm totally guilty of it. I did that all the time, like in middle school. Here we go, Crazy Ken, the crazy, the KK mixtape. Don't go bake in my heart. I couldn't if I fried. Well, that was fan fluff fantastic. Let's close out of that. Don't save those changes. Graphics, I'm curious about this. So do you get like clip art in here? Okay, so my conclusion is it seems like the finder is the thing that is running slow and slowing everything down. Cause like when I use other things, the software, like that program we were just using, seems to respond just fine. It's any time I try to do something in the Finder, everything slows down. I don't know if that's just a common issue with Jaguar or if something is on this computer that's causing problems or what. Here we are. We have we have our oh, there's even a clip art folder. Oh, this is exciting. I didn't see a browser for clip art inside the program, but I see all the assets in the Finder here. So we're just gonna poke around. What the shit? Seriously? Who, who, like, designed these templates and thought this was smart? These are kind of freaky. Let's just open this up here. Yeah. Yeah, I want that on my CD cover. Absolutely. I want the Illuminati on my CD cover. This stuff has, like, kind of a vaporwave aesthetic. Just, it's a little more higher quality, though. 
It's like a slightly higher quality Vaporwave. That definitely is not Vaporwave. Ah, getting a little close again. This this is wacky. This is really wacky stuff. I feel like I'm watching like old 90s like computer animation or something. Which, you know, this stuff was probably close to that. Oh, whoa, hey, is this appropriate? I don't think we should have like dancing ladies in spherical cages on our CD cover. I don't know why. <laughs> We've made some discovery progress, people. I have infiltrated the backgrounds folder. I am now in the business photos directory. Yeah, there's a lot of little, like, picture stuff in the backgrounds folder that you can just put in your projects. Oh, check this baby out, huh? Oh, yeah. That's high resolution. That'll print very well. Oh, we got some dogs. We have dogs, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's a cute one. Ooh, husky. Yes. I'm gonna put a husky on my CD. There we go. That's my CD. Dogs 2012. Oh, there's actually a folder called dog sledding. All right. Specifically. Oh, more husky. Sled dogs are awesome. I actually photographed them before. They are fun. We got a, we got a lot of freaking <laughs> random pictures open now. Should probably uh, close those bad boys. Oh, the close all command, I guess, wasn't a thing back then. What if I hold down option and press the red button? There we go, okay. And I broke the finder again. Well, I think that's enough of Jaguar. Let's try booting into OS 9 and see what we can do. Maybe it'll perform better. Ooh, yeah. I love that sound. There we go, we got the happy Mac. Mac OS 9.2, welcome to Mac OS. So. This is working, so far so good. Let's see how fast it boots, hopefully faster than OS X. Oh, your computer did not shut down properly. Ooh, someone like set this to like italic something here. All right, verifying crazy Ken. Oh, air, disk first aid is unable to read the startup disk. What the shit? Okay, something is really wrong with this hard drive. Either it's like failing, like there's bad sectors on it, or there's just something configured very wrong on the software level, and the hardware might be fine. The software is just really screwed up. I have no idea. It could be either, I guess. I mean, the disc in here is probably very old, but I've had older discs still work just fine. But who knows? This thing could have been dropped, put in an incinerator, you know, thrown off a cliff. A whole bunch of things could have happened to it. Okay, this is really freaky. I'm just like randomly scrolling through Instagram waiting for this thing to load, and there's another photo about CloudGate. Is CloudGate just following us everywhere? And this is interesting, it's actually from an Instagram account called Real Locations, where they go and visit locations that were used in motion pictures, and they like show a picture of the scene in front of an actual photo of the environment, so you can see like the before and after kind of look. And yeah, it's CloudGate, like wow, they're just following us everywhere. <laughs> Network time error, yes, 1973, whatever. But yeah, the interesting thing is, um, this post was about source code, which, is a movie I actually really liked. I rarely like live action movies, but that was a live action movie I really liked. And yeah, now that I think about it, yeah, that took place in Chicago. Okay, so I was trying to kill some time and I just killed everything. Oh, what the f Oh, what? Okay, um. We just got greeted by the OS 9 welcome video. That means OS 9 was installed on this computer but was never actually used. Fascinating, I've never actually used this old wizard before. Oh, it has sound effects, did you hear that? Oh yeah, nope. Nope. No please, no. Oh, okay. Do I really have to register? No, I don't wanna do that. I want to find... Can I, like, force quit you? Yes. Woo! I win! I just did a regular quit, actually. Oh, do you see what I see? iMovie? Is this the original? Before I continue doing this stuff, I need to turn the sound effects on, because this is not the same without the sound effects. There we go. Oh, gosh, that's, like, sex. Oh, I've never heard these on the pro speakers before either. Oh. I could do that all day. Everything's gonna have a sound effect. I hope you like it, because you're gonna be hearing them, so sorry, suck it up. Was it charcoal? I don't remember what the default font for OS 9 was. 
lollipop, lollipop. Gray space or space gray, you decide. Okay, now let's have some fun. I, of course, cannot go without opening the finder Easter egg. The about this finder, or about the finder, screen right here showing the Apple campus from the courtyard view. Created by all the folks here at Apple. Yeah, that's just a cheap way to not have to put everyone's name in there, but that works for me. There's probably a lot of names. I was actually just at One Infinite Loop. I, I'm having a hard time orienting what building that is. I think it's this one. I'm not really good at that. <laughs> Let's see, about this computer, Mac OS 9.2. And then if you want, hold down the option key and go to about the finder. See, the finder is way more responsive than an OS 10, so something is really fucked up on this thing. But I think I see something really awesome. I see an old Mac OS 9 version of iMovie. What version is this? Yep, this is iMovie 2. Okay, so it's not the original, like, first one, but this is still pretty cool. Let's open her up. There we go. Do we get a little welcome video? There it is. <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh, this is great. Crazy Ken's movie. But yeah, it was a full screen app, like you couldn't run it in a window back in the day. Uh, but fun fact, this was the, well, not this particular version. iMovie HD was the first software I ever did digital NLE editing in. Yeah, it wasn't this old version, but it was iMovie. That's where I got my start. Oh yeah, here's our title generator. Yep, this is, this is it, this is it guys. Effects, we probably have some, like some video effects there. I'm sure we have some sound effects built in. Yeah. Yep, that's the reaction to most of my episodes right there. Sounds about right. Well, this computer does have FireWire on it, so I suppose I could, like, actually capture video off of that into the system. I'd have to borrow a DV camera, because the one I have has a bad VTR, as I demonstrated in these other episodes. <laughs> Stop laughing. But yeah, I guess I could make a movie in this once I capture stuff off tape. I mean, if I could edit video in frickin' Adobe Premiere 1, I'm sure I can use iMovie 2 with FireWire. Okay, so there's a built-in microphone, like, right there, that little hole right there. Let's record our own voice. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. Scrubber back on the timeline. Look at that scrubbing. Look at that smooth performance there. Hello, I am Macintosh. It sure is great to get out of that bag. Doesn't sound too bad, considering how old this computer is. That's pretty awesome. I think that deserves a round of applause. All of our transitions, fades, overlap, scale down. Yeah, I don't have any footage I can use with this right now, but I may revisit this some other time. Oh yeah, I accidentally, uh, uh, I dragged the app switcher into the thing. All right, let's close that out. So yeah, this system seems to be performing way, way more snappy than freaking like OS X. I don't know if the software's configured wrong with OS X or what, but this thing seems to be working way better. I haven't used iDVD on OS 9 either. In fact, I didn't even know that was a thing. Shit, that's cool. Let's open it up. So I'm guessing the ver- Oh. Oh yeah, this is the 90s, the late 90s. I love it. So I'm guessing the version we were using on Mac OS X was a carbonized version of this because it wasn't running in the classic environment and I'm guessing they didn't rewrite it in Coco. My great DVD, hell yeah it is. Let's see, what version is this? This is probably the original. Yes, thank you. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh yeah, brushed metal. That was another thing that was there a lot. Okay, let's sit through it. IDVD, yeah, version 1.0. Shit, this is the original iDVD. I have not used this ever. Let's take a look at our themes. Chalkboard. Yeah. I don't have any assets I can actually put into this, but the old iMovie and old iDVD are really cool. I may have to experiment with those in a future episode. And if you have any suggestions for me to try anything out on this computer, do let me know. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for taking along. Sounds like the guards want me now. I'm gonna take care of those guys. Thanks for taking along with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on.